Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's video is going to be on the truth about fats. I had a um, patient come in this week that had a question regarding this topic, and I wanted to expound upon it a little bit deeper. A lot of people are afraid of fats, and I want to kind of go a little bit deeper beyond what fats really are from a biochemical slash organic chemistry level. If we break it down a little bit, I think people will be less afraid of what they are, and they'll see the benefits. So when we're dealing with fats, we have things known as essential fatty acids, EFAs. Again, they're essential because we can't live without them. So if fat's really important, which again, some of these fatty acids are, they're essential to life, then why are we demonizing them? Number two is we have essential amino acids. These are essential proteins, right? And then we have no, nothing known as a essential carbohydrate. There's nothing that's essential in the carbohydrate world. Again, carbohydrates for most people, depending on what your activity level will be a good thing. But again, our body can take protein, amino acids, and shuttle them to glucose. We can use ketones for fuel. We can even shuttle proteins to ketones. So with some people, again, carbohydrates may be a detriment because they've damaged their metabolism and they're insulin resistant. But on that note, let's dig in a little bit deeper here to what fats are. So fats are nothing more than carbon molecules attached to various um, oxygen and hydrogen groups. So you can see here, this is the ending, this, this part right here, this is how all fats for the most part end. They all end in the C, double bond oxygen, single bond oxygen, hydrogen. That's how all essential fats end for the most part. And you can see here how many carbons are attached to that will make the fat what it is. So for instance, this is a four carbon, it's saturated, meaning there's only single bonds, so all carbons have hydrogens attached to it except the last one. This is butter actually, this is butyric acid, four carbons, one, two, three, four. This is what makes butter. And again, depending on how many carbons we add to that chain, it's always gonna end like that. If we have, let's say, six, eight, 10, or 12 carbons, that's gonna be coconut oil, or we call them medium chain triglycerides. We have caproic, caprylic, capric, and lauric acid. These are six, eight, 10, and 12 carbons. So depending on how many carbons we add to that molecule, that depends on what the fat is. If we go up to, let's say, 18 carbons, that becomes steric acid, and that's the same acid that steak is primarily made of. And steak's actually made out of um, saturated fat, but also half polyunsaturated, or same as essentially olive oil. We'll go into that in a second. So we have butter, we have coconut oil, we have steak, all made depending on how many carbons we attach it. So you can see these are our saturated fats because the carbons here are saturated. They have four bonds attached to them. If we go to our unsaturated fats, what makes them unsaturated is the fact that they have a double bond, which again, there's one hydrogen there missing because of that double bond. That's what makes it an unsaturated. Now a monounsaturated, that's essentially olive oil. That means it just only has one double bond that's not saturated. So that's monounsaturated fat. If we're looking at it from here over, this is a monounsaturated, this is olive oil. Now as soon as we start going into multiple double bonds, now it becomes a polyunsaturated. All poly means is many unsaturated bonds. So you can see now we have two. And if we strung up, again, 20 carbons with this pattern right here, that would be fish oil or the primary fat in fish oil. It's known as EPA, eicosa pentanoic acid. If we strung up 22 carbons, that would be DHA, not DHEA, but DHA, decosa hexanoic acid, which is 22 carbons long. And again, olive oil, if we just took out this last double bond and we made it like this and we just copied it all along here, that would be olive oil or a monounsaturated fat. So you can see as we break it down, the organic chemistry it kind of gets your head spinning a little bit. Uh, if you're a little nerdy like me, you can appreciate it. Um, if you haven't taken a science class, it, it may leave your head a little spitting. So I'm trying to keep it slow. Feel free and pause the video and rewind it if you like. So this is a trans fat. This is like the deadly, right? These are the ones that cause heart disease, otherwise known as margarine. And what makes it a trans is right here at this double bond, one hydrogen goes up while the other hydrogen goes down. So if we go over here, check this out we could have easily made olive oil or EPA trans fat by just taking that hydrogen and erasing it and putting it down here. Then we'd have one hydrogen up and one hydrogen down. So this is what makes the trans, is the fact that this part right here is flipped. Hydrogen there, hydrogen there. 
Now, what's the point of trans fats? Well, the food industry loves trans fats because when the molecule goes hydrogen here and hydrogen here, for instance, it makes the molecule really stable to heat and it gives it a super long shelf life. So if we have an unsaturated fat, this becomes rancid or it essentially becomes rotten, if you will, and breaks down at a lower temperature. As soon as we make the fat trans, hydrogen up, hydrogen down, it adds shelf life to it, stability, and we can ship things across the country and they stay fresh. Well, you know, relatively speaking for junk food, if you will. It's not going to be rancid, but this is very inflammatory, super bad cause of almost all, a contributing factor to almost all inflammatory conditions, heart disease, um, diabetes, etc. So again, we have our saturated fats, butter, coconut oil, steak. There's fats that are in between there, but I'm just trying to keep it to things that you're going to know in your daily life. We have our unsaturated fats. We have one double bond, right? That's olive oil. That's a monounsaturated or oleic acid, if you will. If we go and we start adding more double bonds, that becomes EPA or DHA. And again, EPA is more anti-inflammatory. DHA is more for neurological health if we're dealing with fish oil. And then our deadly trans fats that have hydrogens that are flipped in opposite positions here and here. That's what makes it a trans fat. So let's address the benefits. So one of the most important factors of fats is it helps line, you have a lipid bilayer that helps make up your cell membrane. So your cells communicate by things passing through the membrane. So when we have trans fats, one of the things trans fats do is it makes the cell membrane rigid and stiff. So you know if you're competing at the gym or you're getting ready to do a, go for a sprint or go for a run, if your muscles are stiff, you never really perform well. In fact, if your muscles are stiff, you may even pull a muscle and get injured from that. Well, it's the same thing with trans fats. So we have, we have a stiff cell membrane. Our membranes are not going to be able to communicate with each other well. But if we have healthy saturated fats and healthy unsaturated fats, that's going to make our membrane very fluid. So having a fluid cell membrane is like having a dynamic or a uh, adaptable personality. You can adapt to different people in different situations similarly um, with our cell membranes. If we're stiff, then we may have a hard time adapting, and that's what trans fat does. It makes our cell membrane stiff, and it has an inability to adapt. Uh, hormones are really important because a lot of times in life, Again, fats are going to be, especially if they're animal fats, you're not going to see it with coconut oil, but with butter and steak, for instance, you're going to have cholesterol attached to it. And cholesterol is essential for life. It's an antioxidant. It's the building block of all your hormones. Yes, it's been demonized, but it's essential for life. And any biochemist or a PhD researcher in this area will tell you that if you had zero cholesterol, you would die right on the spot. We need it to make our hormones. It's a powerful antioxidant. Also, moisture. Fats help hydrate and bring water to the skin. A lot of times the water can't get there if you don't have good healthy fats. One thing I noticed when I was on a low fat diet is, well, essentially I had super, super dry, itchy skin. And when I started upping the coconut oil and butter, my skin went got better right away. And if you look at a lot of people, what are they rubbing on their skin for moisturizer? Well, they're rubbing on usually coconut butter or shea butter or some kind of fat in there to help bring the hydration in. So, Hydrate your skin internally, not externally, or do both. Again, satiety and blood sugar. Fats help signal leptin, peptide YY, um, adiponectin, all of these feedback neurochemicals that tell the brain we're full. So we want to really be eating good fats. And again, fats for the most part will come with, per with proteins, especially things like steric acid and steak. And also fat-soluble nutrients, right? Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. These are all known as fat-soluble nutrients. We want to make sure we're eating good fats because we're not going to be able to absorb vitamin A, D, E, and K as well. So we really want to make sure that we're consuming good fat-soluble nutrients. Very important. And also satiety and blood sugar Almost all of my patients that have female hormone issues, at some time, they were on a low-fat diet. And I find eating low-fat is a requisite for having hormonal issues. So it's essential that we get you back on eating healthy fats so you can have healthy hormones. We've been sold a bill of goods in our country. Over the last 20 or 30 years, fat's actually gone down consumption-wise per capita, but heart disease and chronic degenerative conditions have actually gone up. So fat really isn't the cause. So I give everyone a lot to think about here. If you have a chronic hormonal issue or digestive issue and you're having a hard time dealing with fats 
or you're having hormonal issues that could be related to fat or blood sugar and adrenal issues related to fat and or thyroid issues too, feel free and click the information on the screen or reach out below. And these problems are totally preventable and there are lots of natural things we can do to take action and fix the problem. Again, this is Dr. Justin signing off. Have a great day.